Welcome to this three-part screencast from LSE Life on your methods section and working with your data for your master's dissertation. In part one, we are going to be looking at data collection. But before we begin to think about your data collection in detail, it is important to remember one key thing to any part of your dissertation. The research question must be at the heart of it all. So, whether you were thinking about your methods, your data, the literature review, or your analysis, it is important, especially in the writing process, to consider all of these sections in light of the research question. Now don't worry if at this stage you still feel that your research question is not there yet. This is pretty common. In fact, in most research, the exact wording of the question only becomes clear much later in the process. But do remember, as you work on each section, to try to keep your research aims in mind to avoid bringing in a lot of information you will have to cut later on. OK, so let's start thinking about your data collection, about the data you will or have collected and how exactly you will or have collected it. First, let's think about your research question itself. What kind of question are you asking or think you may be asking? Is your question descriptive? Are you looking to characterise something, describe the properties that make up this phenomena? Is your question comparative? Are you aiming to show how and why two things relate to each other? Is your question explanatory? Are you trying to demonstrate how one or more things cause something? Or why if certain conditions are met, something else results? Is your question normative? Are you trying to create knowledge to demonstrate how something should be done or how a problem can be solved? It is important to note none of these types of questions are better than the others. Just because a question is descriptive, for example, does not mean it has less value than an explanatory question, especially if you are aiming to characterise something which has never been described before. They all have their individual merits, and what is more important is to think about whether your aim for the research matches with the kind of question you are asking. So what type of data are you working with? Is it qualitative, quantitative? Perhaps you have a mixture of the two? Or is it something else entirely? So where is or will this data come from? We've given you some examples here. Policy documents, historical archives, interviews done by other people, 50 years of census data, voting records, newspapers. Do you know where you are getting your data from? And especially relevant at the moment, do you know if that data is still going to be accessible to you while many places are in lockdown? Your data collection method. How are you going to get the data? And what steps will you need to follow to get this data? Again, have you thought about if your data collection method is still going to be possible? And lastly, practicalities and feasibility which we've mentioned a little bit, but let's think about this in more detail now, as in the current climate, this is particularly relevant. There are many questions to consider here, but perhaps the most important thing is to think carefully if with all that has changed recently, is the data you aim to collect still feasible? How much time do you need to collect your data? Do you require any physical resources? Can you still access these? Are there research instruments to pilot or tools or equipment to test? What are the ethical considerations that are relevant to your study? Have you completed a research ethics form? Is there anything you'll need to do with the data after you've collected it before you can analyse it? For example, transcription, cleaning the data up, backing up your files securely. Do you have a data management plan or know how to create one? These next two tips are essential for your research to be ethical and viable and for you to protect your data and potentially the data of your participants. So if you don't have a data management plan, do have a look at the advice and guidance here before you carry on or begin collecting any data. And your department may well have discussed the importance of research ethics with you. But if they haven't yet, or you are still unclear, it is very important that you get more familiar with this. Most students will not find a particular ethical problem with the aims of their master's level research, but that does not mean this can be ignored. 
So do visit this page if we haven't done yet to make sure your research is ethical. Okay, let's get started on our worksheet on data collection. If you haven't downloaded the data collection worksheet from Moodle yet, please pause this video now and download this from the same Moodle page where you found this screencast. So this is how to use this worksheet. First, write your current research question as is in the far right column, column one. Don't worry if it's not quite final. If you have more than one potential question, make or use more rows. We have given you space for two questions to get started. You'll then work on the same potential question across the worksheet from the far left side to the right. So, pause the screencast now and write in your research question or idea. You may also want to think about these other two questions. What kind of question is it? And if you have more than one question, do they relate to each other or are they totally independent of each other? Starting from the Your Data column, column two, use the questions at the top of the column to help you fill in the next box along. You may find that some of the questions don't apply to your research. This is to be expected, so don't worry. Pause the screencast now and use the prompt questions in the top box to help you fill in the box or boxes below. Moving to column three, continue to work across the worksheet from left to right, working through one of your potential research questions at a time. Don't worry, again, if you only have the one. In column three, you will think about where and how you will get your data. These have been put together as you may find there is a lot of crossover between the where and the how of your data collection. This is to be expected and nothing to worry about. Pause the screencast now and use all the prompt questions in these two columns to help you fill in the boxes below. Don't worry if you don't have an answer to all of these questions. These are here to act as prompts to help you clarify your thinking and ideas about your data. You don't need to provide an answer for everything. Continue to column four. Here you need to think about your potential research question in relation to practicalities and its feasibility. As we mentioned, this is especially important given the current situation and you may have to make a number of modifications to your plans. Pause the screencast now and as before, use all the prompt questions in the two columns to help you fill in the boxes below. Again, don't worry if you don't have an answer to all of these questions, but do try to think clearly about the changes and modifications to your data collection aims you may potentially need to put in place during the current lockdown. Now you have worked through one potential question. If you have more than one question you're thinking about, you may want to go back and work through another one. But, as previously mentioned, if you only have one question or research area at the moment, please don't worry. This is perfectly normal and you don't need to have multiple questions for your research to be successful. Next up, in part two, we'll look at some similar questions, but from the perspective of your data analysis. <laughs>